Hi, hello everyone. It's impossible to see anyone, so oof, there is a, such a bright light. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let us start uh, sharing very briefly our our experience, uh, just to put a put a bit of context uh, where we are. Um, well. In the meantime, they solve the <laughs> technical issues. I'm Cristina Alvarez. Uh, since uh, nine months, I am the group CTO in Banco Santander. But before that, all my experience in the telco industry, I used to be the CIO in, in Vodafone and, and, and the last uh, 12 years also in, in Telefonica. So it, it's quite interesting for me uh, changing a completely different sector like banking but uh, observing that from the technology point of view is quite, quite similar. The only difference is the time when the sector is disrupted. The telco sector was disrupted sometimes uh, some years ago, and banking industry is uh, starting to be disrupted. So some days in, in Santander, I have the impression to be like maybe five, six years ago in, when I was in, in Telefonica. No? That is mainly my always working in, in technology position, but very, very related with business, because for me, everything is about business. Technology is, is necessary, but it's not the final goal. It's really how we really transform our business model. Christina, uh, we've, we've worked together amazingly, yes. but we've only met and actually... We didn't know we, <laughs> we worked together in Telefonica. <laughs> And uh, but different trajectories yeah. in, uh, in in actually changing companies uh, in a very much uh, a, a sweet moment for this because um, the moment in which data yes. reached this this status in which uh, it is less of a, of a cost of business the, the, the play, the thing that you have to to plan for storage and becomes a business asset. And companies start to realize that and start to do things which are interesting with that yeah. data becoming an asset and then build their businesses looking more at the data and less at the technology. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of um, some of the things that we're going to share to, today here. Yeah. Um, my own um, experience, uh, we, we shared the, 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 the Telefonica bit. Um, after that, I went to, to, to work for at and in San Francisco Bay Area. Um, running a, a team of big data innovation and um, having as um, in many other times during my, my life been fortunate enough to, to work with amazing teams that actually uh, can are the ones that actually <laughs> make the change not and we, we, we may be more or less mm. uh, involved in that but it's actually the people who uh, in spite of the organizations sometimes drive the change and actually implement it and then in, in the case of at and I was in that moment in which a company 140 years old, 300,000 um, employees um, changed their pace, not because the regulator chopped it into many baby bells, but because they wanted to be a new thing. And they purchased uh, the Time Warner media conglomerate, and they created a brand new advertising analytics business, which is now named Xander, which, uh, which is a uh, um, uh, a hint of Alexander Graham Bell, the, 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 the founder of, uh, of Bell Labs. And um, this company, 140 years old, with an inertia like, like a dinosaur, made a choice to, to transform based on data. The data that was going to be coming from their communications bit, the data was going to be coming from the media bit, and the, the, the part that they were able to actually monetize mm -hmm. that data in the analytics bit. Yeah. So amazing moments in, in time. And now with Santander. <laughs> We're just at the beginning of the journey, no? Yes. And we are discovering, we are learning about banking sector, we are learning, and th there are huge opportunities to really transform because it's an industry that is uh, now is suffering a big disruption. So I think we, we are going to enjoy it a lot working in this. We are, you and me are a bit of dinosaurs <laughs> because we have been live in companies where data was my treasure and it was data was the power. If I have the info, I have the power. So it's quite interesting. But the good news for, for, for all of us are here today is that there is the most exciting time to work in technology. I've been working in technology for more than 27 years, and at the beginning I felt like I caused a, a, 
as a cost library efficiency, and all the discussion was about cost, cost reduction, and how to really use the technology for me much more productive, okay? It's good, but it's not enough. And today, the technology, when you talk about all the CEOs of the big companies, they are very, very conserved by technology, uh, and for me, that is so exciting. I am really happy to see that technology is in the middle of the business. And, and again, it's not the goal, but it's how we really transform our business model. And that is about the PNL. I always say digital transformation is how you change your PNL using two elements. First, technology. Second, the chain of customer behavior. That is not about to have nice technologies inside the company. That is really how we rethink our business model. And it's very, very tough. Uh, and think, for instance, in the case of Telefonica some years ago, when WhatsApp and Netflix appears, uh, and we were so thinking in our own business and trying to copy them, and it's impossible. All these guys are going to disrupt your core business, and you don't want to compete with them trying to be like them, we, because from my point of view, it's impossible. You really need to understand where are your core strengths, where are you really good, and really transform your core, and really transform where you are the best, and not trying to copy others, because the competitors want to commoditize your strengths. And that is, is, is very, very uh, important. It's a very strategic discussion, and the only difference between the sectors is when, when disruption is coming. Uh, and it's, there is not any difference, the kind of disruption. And the good news for us is the technologies are quite, quite similar. Many years ago, it was not the case today. Everybody talk about cloud, everybody talk about APIs, about data, DevOps, all the basics are there. Where is the difference for me and the challenge is the execution. And the real challenge is how these big companies really execute this digital transformation, creating impact on the PL. And, and, and there is a lot of pressure. I get on the bank in, in February, we launched all of our uh, cloud program in March, we're already putting in production, uh, and it's not easy, and it's not a question of nine months getting a baby in one month. There are structural changes takes time. And to really create sustainable uh, difference, it, it really, but it's very important to start the journey. And doing and learning by doing, that is not like in the past, huge, long processes, testing, learning. Technology is there. It's outside. It's available. I had a lot of discussion with my teams in the last years. Ah, we really need to test this new technology. Come on, guys. There are many people using this technology across the world. Less learning, doing things. And maybe it's not going to be perfect. And I remember our first cloud project in Santander has been a very good <laughs> learning experience. And it was a data project. But I am happy. And people was very reluctant to tell me, Christina, oh, it's been a disaster. OK, great news. We are learning. Because these new technologies are very difficult to execute in big companies. Uh, uh, and it's something we really need to help and to enable our people to really fail and to really change things. And, and our main responsibility is always the icebreaker, and how we take the, the, the sticks, and how we really put in together the technology, the business, the risk, the compliant people really moving on the same direction. But there is not an option. Uh, and the difference for me is going to be where are the companies they can really execute, or the others, they are going just and slow dead. Uh, and, and that is, for me, is very, very important because this is not about the, the technology team. Of course, you need a technology team very powerful, but you can have the best technology team in a company, you don't trust for the company. That is a leadership issue. Starting from the top, from the CEO and all the senior managers, finance, marketing, operations, uh, legal, human resources, technology. That is not about putting technology, big data analytics, and all these new things across the company, and that's it. It doesn't work. 
the, the real challenge is how you really man manage a company in a stereo vertical in this way. Because if we really believe that we want to be a customer-centric organization, you really need to manage your company by customer journeys. And that breaks all the traditional way of working. And, and that, for me, is the challenge. First of all, understand for what I need to transform my business. For what in terms of business? That is a business discussion. I want to uh, change the revenues or the cost. But let's first have the discussion where is the business driver. And after that, I had the what. Now we start talking about the how. But many companies start making things, putting big data, putting many technology pieces with no clear business driven. And they fail. OK, maybe they can get some nice prayer release but they are not really transforming the company. So that is because it has to be the top-down, has to be business-driven, and it implies a very, very deep chain from the technology, from the people, and from the processes. And if you don't do three things at the same time, it doesn't work. And I remember <laughs> I failed completely in 2015 when I started creating the first Agile team working in cloud. After one year, it was a disaster because I underestimate the reluctancy of the intermediate managers, I underestimate the complexity of the new technology, and I underestimate that the difficult part is not putting the first work in the cloud. It's how you run in the company the day after, and how you run in a data product that is not managing software lines. It's managing data on real time. That is completely new world, but again, the, the important thing is really have the commitment of the top uh, managers to really have a single plan. That is not the business and technology plan. That is the company plan, and to really execute and start in a small, getting results, and really continue on that. And again, technology, many times I see is the easy part, because it sounds like, uh, OK, <laughs> I'm an engineer, but the re because I suffer a lot in my, in my experience, really changing the way of working, not only in technology, also working with my colleagues, but saying that all of these new technologies are very, very complex. I, imagine how different, well, imagine is, is the reality, how you really change a thing working in mainframe or in traditional distributed system in the last 15, 20 years, now working in cloud with Kubernetes containers uh, and in a sec DevOps. Wow, so nice, it's fantastic, but the reality that is really, really very, very complex. And creating box is very easy. Creating really scalable, industrialized services, massive service with uh, millions of transactions is another story. Uh, and we have to be very serious, and we have the responsibility to explain that that is not creating an app in a weekend. That is very serious. There are good news. There are very good guys uh, uh, and good companies that we have to support. We have to get the best of all these companies to really change our business model. But don't forget that it takes time, it's not easy, and things are going to fail. And I want to share with you my, my worst experience working as a CIO. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, and it's something that it really helped me a lot to think that maybe we had to manage things in a completely different way. It was a, a, a database corruption, 2011, 30 of December. I was with my family in a nice hotel, and all my team was distributed uh, in their holidays across the world. And we have to manage a very, very uh, tough situation in the middle of the Christmas campaign, uh, and we really learned a lot. And not only the technology teams, all the company. Because many, many times, out of technology, they underestimate the impact and the complexity of the, when, the things, uh, when the things doesn't work. And many people think that this new technology never stops. <laughs> it's quite funny, my conversation in the bank now. But, but that is putting in the cloud, and it's secure, and it works 24-7. No, 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 guys. Things 
are, uh, things go down in, in a data center or in the cloud. And we have to be ready to react. And, and the good news now, the technology and the automation really helps a lot compared with the past. But don't be shy and don't be um, optimistic, underestimating the complexity of all of this. And, and it's very, very important to be ready for the fail. Amazing story. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I think that there's, there's uh, technology is, is one of the enablers, and as was Christina was saying, it's, it's, it's probably the, the one that comes to mind first, and there is a, an inertia to go for it fully. That happened with the data lakes, and yeah, everyone has a data lake or two, or too many, and then there's the thought of, what are we doing with this data lake? What, what are we going to, what's the business doing? What's the business doing making of it? And in many cases, the, the, the culprits, the, the guilty ones, are us, the geeks. I mean, we are geeks, so we like it. We, we like technology. So we go ahead and we build the lakes, and we, then suddenly some creatures appear in the lake. And, and in some cases, uh, discussions go back to technology, when we should be focusing on what are we going to do with this. And I had one of these conversations with, with, my, with, with, with my teams in, in Palo Alto. We, we should be riding the wave of technology. We were in the, in the, in the cradle of technology with the best minds in, in that, that money can, can, can hire, suddenly there was kind of a, a sad vibe because our legs were Jurassic. I mean, it was, it was the term that was so sticky that we had a moment in which uh, the, 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 the teams were talking about that. Well, the versions of our Spark are not the latest, the prime latest, because I can download that, but I cannot find it in my production lake. So, there was this tension between the teams that actually had to make things work in production and the teams that wanted to innovate and more and more and more, and you, they could not stop themselves from doing that. And we need to actually be there for the teams that are in production, because those are technologists as well, those are gigs, but they need to actually maintain a stable production system. Sometimes our innovation, our innovator ourselves, is, is fighting against that. So we, we, we treat technology a little bit like technology toys. We want to have the latest and, and finest. Mm -hmm. So one anecdote um, from, from my own experience on this was, was having to face my team in, 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 in Palo Alto and be very harsh on them because, of course, they were giving a hard time to the production teams that actually were just one version behind in, in Spark. It was not that big a deal. But then something happened. Or, as it happens in, in, in that area of the world, the CTO for, for the whole AT&T, John Donovan, happens to be also on the board of Palo Alto Networks and blah, blah, blah. So he popped by our office, which was in the central office in the middle of, of Palo Alto. And he asked around, hey, guys, would you, w would you ask me? I'm the most powerful technology man in your company. What would you ask me if I gave you the chance to ask me for something? Do you think my team <laughs> asked for more power, more machines, another lab, um, a potential to, to work, I don't know, exactly, to, to strike a deal with Stanford University across, the, across the, the Camino Real? No, they didn't. They complained about the Jurassic Lake. <laughs> and that has been lingering around AT&T since I, since I left. I, I found a friend uh, visiting Madrid the other day, and there were still rumors in the corridors about the Jurassic Lake. That is the kind of power that you can unleash when you do things right, and also the, the kind of the bad vibe that you can create when you do it just for the wrong reasons. And of course, there was a bashing of the team that in production to try to, to bring that leg to, to the right um, level of, of release. But then the next, the next generation of releases never came because that production team stopped talking to that data science team. And we had to dedicate a lot of time and effort to build back those relationships. So we need to be careful with these things. They are more important than, than when things and it is not about technology. It's also the, the, the dynamics, the human dynamics, the team dynamics in between, in between those teams, which may, may um, you may find things going south with no specific reason. It's not the technology, it's the people. And of course, it's also the processes. We had an intro before saying, okay, the technology, processes, and people, and data in the middle. And what happens with processes? Well, you were very successful in the previous generation. That something brought you here. 
Uh, you were Henry Ford, and you created the first car in production, and you reinvented the, 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 the production um, scale um, um, building and selling of cars for the first time. And for a couple of decades, or a decade and a half, you are king of the hill. There's no one can beat you. And then you become overconfident, and you've got this, this funny uh, kind of catchphrase, any color car, as long as it is black, because that is the car I do. Um, but then you become a little bit resting in your laurels, you, you become a little bit of a, uh, overconfident, and the processes that brought you there are not going to take you to the next phase. The, there's someone that is going to be thinking on that process, and they don't have the ties and the legacy and the, mm. and the mental blockers that you have, and they are going to do something different. Like, for instance, in the case of Ford, GM came and they said, okay, no, any car for any purpose, any budget, any uh, purpose. So we will work for the customer. That has, of course, become a theme for, from, from then on. But that made Ford lose very quickly a lot of market share. And then, of course, they finally changed the process. They transformed. And that is a little bit the driver here. Technology opens up possibilities, but then if your organization, if your processes are not up to what it, they need to be, mm. if you transform those processes, if you don't transform those processes, you will just add technology to a thing that is not working. So that is, that is one of the, that's one pitfall in, in processes that, that we need to be aware. And another, another one is, not just technology, but also data brings and opens a lot of uh, possibilities. We were saying that before. You can transform a 140-year-old company um, based on the, on the potential of, of data to create and grow a new business. But then, with that comes, it's like Spider-Man, with great responsibility, <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. So now you've got data enables um, a, a, new, a new business, but enables, needs to enable a new set of conversations between teams that maybe not were all that happy talking to each other. IT, compliance, and legal, and, and operations, they all need to sit together and think very hardly through some of the issues that are new because data is not code. It's a different thing. So we were able to cage code in a particular machine and then protect the machine with a firewall and blah, blah, blah. But now the, the data comes out of that box <laughs> and it's floating around. What do I do with this? Well, apply the same things that, that we did with code and hardware. Well, it guess, guess what? That is not possible. You cannot do that. So now we need to get these people to sit together, to rethink those processes before even you see any, any of the supposed business benefit. So it is hard because there's no money yet backing it. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is kind of a, an interesting conversation. And one of my personal anecdotes in this, in this particular case was um, prior to at and when we first made um, uh, the product that Elena Hill was talking about before. Um, we were working with a, with a team, with a corporate team in, in, the, in a digital unit, and then we are creating for the first time a product that was actually uh, the immune system of the organization we were working for was ready to attack that new product because we don't sell data. We sell communications. We sell mm -hmm. phones or communications lines or, or even TV. But that company was not ready to start selling this other thing, data. How do you touch that? How do you um, tell your salespeople to sell that? We don't know. We, we approach uh, that, that. That is a goodie, right? That is, is something, something we bundle with our trios and duos, and something we, we bundle with your, with your connectivity. No, it's not. It's a source of big revenue, but we need to understand it. We need to retrain a lot of, a lot of people. So I went down from this corporate world in which we had made a few, we had some success stories in, in specific markets with specific clients, like a supermarket chain or with a, an airport um, in, a, in a particular place that wanted to, to steal some market share from another airport. And those were success stories and we already did some of the technology bit, so we're quite confident. So in that case, it was, I, I happened to be in one of those places in which you are the only guy that speaks both English and Spanish and can sit down with the Spanish-speaking team and try to, to, break some, to break the ice. So mm -hmm. I got in front of this table with 17 guys telling me that is not secure, that is not legal, that is not feasible, that is not profitable. You cannot do that. 
And it was kind of an experience. Of course, over the course of six months, we have had all the time in the world to go through the, through the right conversations, to go through the right reassurance that what we were, we were trying to do was perfectly my, migratable, or, or we, could, we could take it from, from that other place to their mm -hmm. local context and make it, make it work. But I can, I can tell you that that was a learning experience, <laughs> confronting that team and saying, being said no so many times <laughs> really builds your character, builds your skin like this. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that you need to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. Some survival tips is don't <laughs> give up. It will happen it, if you're persistent enough, but you need to face this is going to happen. You need, the same way that with technology that Christina was preventing us, it will fail. Just be ready for it. In this case, this will happen. So you will have to face a lot of no's, and you'll have to work with teams that are not absolutely not technical at all. If you oversee that, if you don't, if you underestimate that, you're prone to fail. Because that, that, is, that is something that we need to, to incorporate very clearly in the, in the process. Mm. No, and, and one important point for me, and, and we have the obligation as the technology teams to educate to the rest of the companies. And I know that sometimes, and in the past, I think the technology team have done a very bad job because we manage a language uh, 599.99 now, SQL, uh, um, and very nice words that nobody understand us out of sight of technology. So it was comfortable because we live in, a, in an island, but uh, on the other side, we were always guilty because it was very difficult for the rest of the organization to understand us. So I think uh, and this one of my obsession with the teams that I manage is we have the obligation to speak the business language. And if we are not able to explain a technology project, where is the benefit for the customer or for the business, maybe uh, before, in that case, let's stop the project. And I remember it, 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 that sounds a bit aggressive, but that is true. If we are able to show that really putting a new technology piece, we are not contributing, we are not able to explain in a single page where is the business benefit, customer benefit, forget about that project. And really start measuring how you are really performing with your business. It's not about the communication, the machine, the hardware, the software is up and down. It's really the customer get the transaction in the online channel. It's really the customer able to really make what they experience uh, and at the end of the day, we, we really have to abstract all that complexity. And thanks to all the new technology with data, it's amazing the capabilities that we have. Let me show you a very real example that I lived some years ago in, in Telefonica and now other in, in Santander. You know that for Telefonica, TV services was one of the key uh, strategic priorities and video services are pure real-time service you can it's not the same putting a fiber at your home that really being in the middle of a soccer match real madrid barcelona having an issue is completely different uh, story so uh, and, and the traditional way to work in, in the telcos was a completely batch approach all the company was batch so uh, and it was quite funny when I, I remember the first time we put the commercial, the commercial report in real time. People from commercial say, and now what? Because all my processes were thinking to receive the report at the uh, next day. So I really need to remain how I were to manage a real time report. Okay, good. That was the easy part because it was more the analytic. But when you really start managing data in the real time transaction, that is another story. And we really need to find a way to get all the data from the set of box, all the data from the content that the customer was visualizing, all the info from the network, because if you had an issue with the mobile or with the, with, with the network, there has a complexity that when we had an incident, it was a nightmare, because you really need to collect more than 30 people in a table how to manage all that complexity. And we couldn't afford that. You can afford that if it's not a real-time business. But for a pure real-time business, you cannot do that. So, and the important thing, it was not, my box is okay. No, 
Is the customer experience really good? He's having frozen images, he's having some delays, uh, and it's really how we measure customer experience from all the technology data. And we really worked very, very hard. And the important, the most difficult thing was sitting together on the same table, all the areas involved was the, the first challenge. But one, they understand that the goal was how we measure our customer are getting the right TV service and how we really use the real-time data technologies that we can put all the data together and to really include it in the in the real time transaction we really make a step change and and was the, the again the most difficult part was to align all the people to really not having the goal for their bucket or their box really having the end-to-end -end goal uh, um, and another for me very very interesting example how we uh, had to create the content recommendation for the customer. The first approach was the pure traditional, let's make a lot of software, let's make to create a complex architecture, let's go on to buy, forget about that. We have to manage for this a completely new data technology. This is not about relational database, it's completely different technology, let's do it. We had a need, we have to get this piece in the market in six months, there is technology outside, let's try it. And again, the most difficult part for putting the people from the content, putting the people from legal, putting the people from data together on a table with a single goal, helping them to change the process and to break many processes and many obstacles in these big companies is the most difficult part. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were able to really put in, in six months this software piece with the data, and it was the way to really show that in these big companies, it's, it's quite difficult, the transformation, but if you have the right support from the, from the top managers and we have the minimal number of people really wanting to change, you can. Because when you start changing things, people say, okay. It, it, suddenly, 80% of the people saying every day that is not possible. That is the case now in the bank with all the cloud. <laughs> I receive much more people saying, you are crazy, that people really able and thinking how I, I can change. When you really identify this key business project and you really identify these people that they are really change agent, is the way to start uh, making things change. Uh, and you really can scale up. Because when people think that they, you can do it uh, in other way, and if they fail, you are not going to kill them, is when the people start saying, OK, why not? And of course, there is 20% of the people that they don't want to change. Forget about that. And focus on the people that really want to change and combine new skills with existing one. You need both. It's impossible to think just yes, people from outside can transform such huge organization. So for me, that is the key challenge for a leader in this big company. How you combine the new profiles, the existing one, put in a clear business goal and help them to deliver. Because at the end of the day, if you don't execute, you don't deliver, you are not changing anything. And one of the problems that I observe in these big companies, there are many people talking, many people with a great ambition, but we fail in the execution. So that is very important, being very concrete, and it's my obsession with, with Jose Luis and the rest of the team. Let's execute a concrete use case. Okay, we want to go to the moon, but before going to the moon, let's start small. Let's execute one use case that has benefit for the business and let's learn the technology and the rest because we have the obligation to educate. But I think it's really, I, I really enjoy a lot and that is the reason because I, I made my decision to come to a different sector to really try to transform and to help to, to this new, the, uh, to create a, this new company, no? So, this. Uh, just building on, on, on <laughs> that was amazing. So uh, what we need to do when we are kind of these change agents that we both are new to the bank, we came this year, uh, we're trying to well, help uh, whatever we can, have some really neat, pristine messages that need to go through and we need to repeat and repeat. 
and, and we need to also create some 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 illusion of what is at the other mm -hmm. side of all this transformation. This this is all hard stuff. It's going to be taking a lot of time and effort and energy that you need to put in. And as Christina was saying, no, this is not immediately evident when you've been already thinking on doing something different with the startups and with the, <laughs> with the, do you think that you're past your corporate moment and then you're back into your corporate moment with, with a stronger force? Because of course there, the forces of, <laughs> of no are very clear when you, when you try to, to change um, a company like this. You need to get to that moment in which you change is hard to change is fun. Because there is a moment in which, as, as Christian was saying, people start to hmm, see that change start to happen, see things start to tilt the other way. And then it's like, OK, I may actually use this. This may actually help me. It's not a threat. It's an opportunity to do something different. Or it may be my ne next step in my career, become whatever next thing by, by being an expert on that thing. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a need, there's this need to, to, to tell a story. And yeah, excuse me for using the cheesy um, um, mandatory stage of image. But it is not here because of the of Steve, which uh, of course we we uh, we all think is 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 probably one of the best storytellers, and and creators of of products that kind of stick to to our to our to our memory and um, our, our collective minds. This is here because that very auditorium, where where he's standing right now, is in the old Cupertino offices for Apple. And it's where I had to take the data science team reporting to me because there was no way I could, they, I tried everything to keep them with me, but I didn't know how else to motivate them. The Jurassic Lakes were already non-Jurassic. Um, I brought business people to try to offer the connection to, from what they were doing to the, to the business, and we were successful at that, as successful as to be the seed of Sander, the new company that was going to be formed. Still, they were, Restless, and every week, if you uh, managing a team in, in in Silicon Valley is kind of a crazy thing. Every 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 big week, you've got someone coming to you saying, "Okay, I've got an offer from Google, I've got an offer for Facebook, I've got an offer for eBay." So you have to actually think very hard how to keep people with you. What I was, I didn't know, and of course, there's a limited set of options in an old company such as AT and T to to bring the kind of incentives that these companies have on on on, on employees which are technical. So I ended up learning from them just by, by working very closely with them that what they wanted to be is in the exclusive clubs of data scientists in Silicon Valley. And there was one of those, Baylearn, a conference that was kind of very little known. It's not one of those these, these hundreds of people conferences. And, and I, I, I was happy enough to be able to get them tickets to the all tickets, to get all the team in there. And they, they hosted, Apple hosted us in this very auditorium. And I could see their static views and say, okay, and now I hit the nail in the head. Now I got it, but I didn't know how to. I didn't know what was going to work. And it's, it's keeping trying, trying and failing and doing some things even with, with, with the teams, with people. You don't know what's going to motivate. You know what is going to click. You don't know what is going to, to, to work. So you repeat and then repeat it again and then repeat it again. Because at some point, someone in the audience is going to catch that digital transformation is here to stay, and you better get used to it. <laughs> and you are part of this, by the way. You are part of it. It's not going away. You are part of it. So just accommodate yourself, change your mind, change your processes, stop saying no, and start looking for ways to say yes. And for people which are existing teams, they need to feel that they are part of that new thing. It's not something that is coming there to, to invade their space. It's a new space, and they need to move in. And for the newcomers, the change agents, the, the data scientists, the, the brand new people you're bringing, they also need to, to, to be leading that change and not really hiding in a corner, saying, oh, we are a center of excellence of this and that. They need to spread around, and they, they need to get together with the skeptical and turn them into believers. So this is, it doesn't get any easier than that. Absolutely. I'm very, very important. I made my decision to come to Santander because I really believe they had a very good vision. And for me, that is a fundamental uh, point, as I told before. That is about how to reinvent the company, not how to reinvent the technology area. So, and I really believe the, the, the chairman, the CEO, has a very clear view where we want to go. But 
Saying that is very important and it is part of our job, how we really explain that there is a multi-year journey and creating a sustainable uh, advantage and to really transfer a huge group like Santander is going to take time and it's going to be tough and we are going to have to make tough decisions. And, and we really need a very strong top-down leadership, but I think it's very worth it. It really, when you really see such a company with such a history and all the things they have done across all the history, okay, maybe it's easy to work in a small company, of course, but I really feel the, the, the obligation to try to contribute to, to really change the, the, the company. No? But it's very, very important to be very realistic and to ensure that it's not a question on next quarter uh, and to really explain them that we really need concrete results. That is not about having the first result in two, three years' time. That is because I am obsessed with the real concrete use cases every three, four months. But saying that it's very important to be very, very persistent and don't lose the final motivation, because in these big companies, sometimes there is a lack of patience and there is the sense of urgency getting resolved. I really need all the execution resolved I need for tomorrow. Okay, this part of the anxiety we have to manage uh, uh, and we have to be very, very consistent. I always say it in Spanish, sorry, I don't know how to say it in English, to be Gotamalaya. That is very, very important is when it's raining very, very, uh, well, I, I don't know. Continuously. Well. Yeah, yeah, continuously. It's very important from the technology areas, educate how the technology can help all the areas of the company to transform, because they need to transform the processes, the way they are doing business, and, and to really create a robust foundation. We are now in Santander creating our sustainable technology foundation with all the key pillars, and that is just the early beginning of the journey. Uh, and to really take in the right projects with the right teams and start making happen. And for those of you that don't know where this is, this is a man-made um, um, scenery made by the Romans by persisting and changing the course of a river to actually mine gold. It's in Astorga, for all those of you that want to travel there. It's persistence. Do whatever you have to do. Use water, use a drop like Gotamalaya until it actually <laughs> breaks uh, whatever has to be broken. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of the secret sauce to all of this. Yes. Don't, don't give up. Push back. Uh, be determined. And enjoy. It's enjoy. very important. Have fun. Yeah, if have I fun. don't enjoy in my work, I prefer to leave the company. Com to be completely honest, because I think we invest a lot of time, a lot of energy. Uh, Sundays are really tough. But it's very important at the end of the day, you come back home and say, OK, I'm really making things and I'm really enjoying, no? Because there are many people in these big companies, they are the, like zombies, and they are like, uh, and, and for me, it's a pity, you know? and, and again, it's part of how we really uh, understand where is the big picture and, and the most important question, if we are able to answer to the, all the people, what I win with this digital transformation. No? That, for me, is, is a key challenge for, for all the leaders, because if we are not able to answer this question to all the people in the in a company, it's impossible to transform the company. Yeah, so keep calm, change everything, uh, have keep fun. Keep calm is <laughs> very, very important. <laughs> okay, so that's questions? it. No? That's one more click, I think. Uh, yeah. Question? <laughs> Thank you.